Hi. Hi, Zibby. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, thanks for joining. I'm sorry I didn't see you before. You didn't pop up in the little... Anyway, whatever. Oh, I yeah. Pop. I was on from the very beginning. So great uh, chats with all the authors. Very informative. Um, really appreciate what you're doing to highlight authors. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks yes. for being one of them and for joining today. Thank um, you for having me. You know, your book, from one chapter to the next, I'm like, what else is going to happen here? <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Like, I couldn't believe it. Everything was like... And now you're now it's the crack house and now it's the schizophrenia. And now it's I was like, how is she so resilient that you could take all this sort of on the chin and then also write about it? Like, it's, yes. it's one thing to like, I'm OK, I'm a lawyer, I'm out there and I'm like succeeding. But to stop what you're doing and take the time to write about it. Tell me about that decision. Like, what made you do that? Wow. Actually, Zibby, I was 16 when I knew that I wanted to write a book. By that time, I had been in the court system to determine where I was going to live. I was going into my 14th school, my eighth household, where my paternal grandmother took me in and back to one of the three states uh, that I've lived in throughout my life. So I knew then I told my cousin, I'm like, I'm going to write a book. But I didn't necessarily know the full scope of what the book was about. I just knew that this just had to be told, you know, all of that was going on. But since that time, I've committed more time into understanding and learning about my mother's mental illness, going through my phases of grief and denial of her not being who I knew her to be in years prior. Um, and just trying to understand how family members help a loved one who is living with severe mental illness. My first introduction to it was when my mother left me. Uh, in Houston, Texas. And then subsequently, she did attack me, which led me to being in the court system. Um, but my love for her prevailed over all of that and wanting to help her. So I turned to movies that were about mental illness. Back in 1994, there was a movie starring Diana Ross that just, I wanted to know how did the family react to this? What did the family do, if anything, to help the person? And so since that time, I've been highly involved in NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And ultimately, about 10 years ago, I actually committed to writing uh, hashtag driven um, because I was in a moment of grief going through my divorce and it forced me to encounter and to deal with the feelings that I had for a lot of things that I didn't necessarily know that I was dealing with. Um, so I went through a program called the Grief Recovery uh, it's based on the grief recovery handbook and there's a whole course for it and that really helped me to tap into my feelings things that i was suppressing and helping me to move forward with actually getting it down into a book and publishing it 30 years later <laughs> oh my gosh yeah um and you decided to self-publish did you try yes. to did you try to sell it or you decided from the beginning you just wanted to self-publish or how did that happen i'm always so interested in that decision yeah, actually, I researched a lot. I talked to a literary, a literary agent in L.A. and talked to others um, who have self-published and became, you know, New York Times bestsellers and other types of best-selling awards. And I was highly encouraged to pursue the indie route. And I did. And plus, I wanted to meet a timeline. My birthday was coming up. And I was turning 46 and I was going to turn that birthday celebration into my book launch. So we moved forward with um, me doing it myself and working with consultants and coming forward with a uh, hashtag driven. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, that's so exciting. I know that the, that is one of the major drawbacks with traditional publishing is it takes so long. I mean, it can be, yeah. um, I've been working on this book, 40 love and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this published in my forties. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm going to run out of time. Yeah. Have to have it be 50 love before you know it. But, um, <laughs> Tell me about how the undesirable circumstances, and you use this phrase often, how things were undesirable. How did you get past them? Like, what do you think it was about you? Because you could have easily gone as we, I mean, I could say this about a lot of people, but you could easily succumb to circumstance. And yet you didn't. Yes. What do you think it was? I attribute it to God and people who pray for me when I didn't know to pray for myself. The book is broken down into five principles. And the first one is faith. 
-hmm. having faith in your God-given talents. But many times we don't know what our talents are, what our gifts are. We learn them along this life's journey. And so I really appreciate the people who filled in the gaps along the way. You know, the times when I was not with either of my parents, not even living with family members in some portions of my life, um, but that they were there. And I really truly believe that God placed them there. And ultimately that people were praying for me when I didn't know to pray for myself. Wow, that's amazing. And I do want to share it just in regards to the undesirable circumstances. That was not my phrase. It was a phrase from a teacher that I had in high school. She committed time during study halls to help students to apply for colleges and scholarships. And she knew more about my life than I knew at that time. And she told me that I had undesirable circumstances, just knowing some of the situations that I had come through. And from her two words, undesirable circumstances, I created my life's motto, which is don't allow undesirable circumstances to be excuses for you to fail, but allow them to be reasons for you to excel. Wow. I think even having a life <laughs> motto is great. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're just, I mean, I love the way you look at the world. It's like Thank you. you have like a plan and then, I mean, it's perfect. Your title is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So what I'm just curious, so what do you want next? Like, I feel like you put your mind to something and you are going to do it and get it. And like, that's who you are. So what else do you want? Or is this like, was this like the, as far as you got or? No, you never enough. Things? Never enough. <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs> I just finished reading, uh, reading David Goggins book. Uh, you can't hurt me. And he has a, a phrase in there that he, his refrigerator is never full. And that's how I am. Like, I finished one thing and I'm on to the next, but I really would like to um, complete and I am working to complete my children's book. And it addresses absent parents because a lot of children um, are living their lives without their parents being present for whatever reason, whether it's death, incarceration, drug addiction, in my case, mental illness. And I just want to help to break the stigma in regards to mental illness and bringing more awareness and helping people to know how they, even if they don't have a loved one or family member or they themselves are experiencing severe mental illness, that they can still advocate and take action because we're all getting ready to vote in November. And some of the things that we can look at with our anyone that we're going to vote for or any levies that were or issues that are on the ballot and looking to see how funds are being um, distributed directly for mental health services because they're highly needed, especially in light of the COVID-19, because there are more people who are needing uh, mental health services than previously. And unfortunately, previously, the mental health care system was not is not equipped to handle those who were already in need, especially those who have severe mental illness like schizophrenia and bipolar. So true. Have you been watching um, on HBO? There's a new show called, based on Wally Lamb's novel called "I Know This Much Is True" about identical twins. Have you? Seen, I don't know if you read it or you're watching it, but actually, it is like <laughs> <laughs> my sister in love, and I say this because I, I know I listen to you and um, Chef Morgan, right, or Lisa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with her book and the divorce aspect. And so my, I, you know, sister-in-law technically, but I call her my sister-in-love because I am now divorced, but we have a very strong relationship and she's been very instrumental in just helping me throughout grief and just things in life, right? But she told me just yesterday about that book and that, uh, the, that, that the series is on. So I did look it up. It's available on Amazon. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to watch it. Um, I'm very interested to watch it. I just finished reading a book by Dr. Tori, and there's been different studies on twins, one who may have schizophrenia and one who does not have any type of uh, brain disease and how they may differ in their behaviors from childhood into adolescence into adulthood. So I'm very interested to see how, it's, how that is depicted on um, the movie. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's like we sit there and like we can't even move after, but it's it's really good. And oh, I love that you call that. I am also divorced, as you heard me say, but I have a sister in love as well. And yes. uh, that's a nice way to say that because yes. she'll, she'll never really stop being my sister. But, you know, <laughs> anyway, yes. um, well, thank you so much. These 10 minutes are never enough. But thank you so much for coming on, for sharing, for being so inspiring and just thank you. Like, I love your drive. I just, it's like infectious. It's awesome. Well, I appreciate it. And I would like to just share for all those who are listening and those who may have a loved one living with severe mental illness, I have available five essential keys on coreyempowers.com just to give people a baseline knowledge um, of 
how they can be there for their loved one, friend, or if they, their significant other even, um, and moving forward with whatever relationship you're able to adapt. Because, you know, there's no one size fits all relationship. There's no one size fits all treatment plan. And we just have to understand and know our loved one's symptoms and how we're able to relate to them with those symptoms. So thank you so much for this opportunity and to feature hashtag driven, <laughs> um, which is available on Amazon. And you can also get it going through CoreyEmpowers.com. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye, Corey. Thank you. Have a have great, great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.